Hi, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and this is not a regular episode of Flat Earth Can't Science. Back when I was in the service, we used to call this a snap mission. Uh, I was looking at a couple of videos today, and uh, somebody came on and said that uh, basically they didn't agree with the numbers that were being used in the video. Okay, and that's just good and fine. Science is meant to be questioned. However, the sponsor of the video, not even the person that made it, came on and said basically that they would love to see their data and why they objected. And then they paused for a few seconds and came back and said, oh, you're just some punk gamer kid. You don't have anything on any of this. Get lost. Well, I didn't think that was very cool, especially since the uh, punk gamer kid actually brought up some very good points. Well, long story short, my blood got up a little bit, so I decided I'll be your huckleberry and I'll address it. So ranty flat earth, this is for you. Well, today we have a new flat earther that put out a video uh, about an observation he made of Pikes Peak uh, through the chemtrails, but could clearly see it from 132 miles away. Ranty Flat Earth immediately mirrored this on his site and requested everybody sub to this new guy because he's got such a great observation here. Now, honest to God, I really don't have an objection to people supporting new folks that want to do research in this field. I think it's great to encourage that sort of thing. But if you're going to throw your reputation behind them, maybe you might want to check their numbers a little bit first. So let's go ahead and have a look at this observation. So just a quick thing on the uh, technical aspect of the observation. He did a very good job demonstrating his locations and such. It was very easy to find on Google Earth, get, uh, get elevations and locations and distances. So this is 132.1 miles from this intersection on a road to Pikes Peak. The observation height relative to the area was 510 feet above the low spot. Pikes Peak was actually about 9175 feet above that low spot. And as you can see from the curve calculator here, we should have about 3400 feet visible. This is the advanced curve calculator, and as you can see, we've put all the numbers in correctly. And if we look at this next shot from Google Earth uh, concerning Pikes Peak, you can see about where the level of the horizon should be. Now, as I said, this is kind of a snap video that was put out, so I'm not showing all of my work here, but you have all the numbers that you need to do it yourself if you'd like to check them. Now, unfortunately, we have all those nasty chemtrails in the air, and they're kind of making the picture a little bit hazy, but you can make out Pikes Peak there in the background, a little bit towards the left. I've put up another picture from the same video that shows Pike Peak, and I've marked where the horizon appears to be on that photograph. Now, comparing the two side by side, as you can see, they do seem to match up pretty well. Now, in the original video that Ranty mirrored, uh, the author claimed that only about 1,000 or 1,200 feet should be visible. In reality, quite a bit more, almost three times as much more is visible. And he claimed that he could see 8,000 feet of this mountain. As you can see from these photographs, not only do we not see 8,000 feet of the mountain, we see exactly, more or less, what the curve calculator predicted we should see. Again, the globe is confirmed. So not only was the claim in the video disproven, now I have a few questions. You see that arrow there? That's where Denver is supposed to be. Would you be so kind as to point out where Denver is? You see the dark photograph there in the lower right corner is a little more of a night shot. But there's a major city sitting right there, 300 feet underneath the curve. You want to point it out to show me where it is? Now on this next uh, frame here, we have a little hill there marked with the arrow. That's 9,300 feet MSL. Uh, that's uh, more than 4,000 feet above the observation point. Yet it's really quite low in the photograph. That little hill should be visible all the way down to about 5,600 feet, but it starts at 6,300 feet uh, with a gentle plane rising up to it. So it's no wonder that we see the entire hill with Pikes Peak behind it. You know, I'm not going to bother and do a conspiracy cats on this. Uh, I'll let you go ahead and figure out the angles here between the top of that little hill and the top of Pikes Peak 20 miles further on. I think you may find some uh, evidence of curvature of the earth there if you look. So once again, Ranty, I wasn't really planning on doing this, but you were uh, so 
shall we say, dismissive of somebody asking good questions, I really felt that I needed to step forward and ask you a few. Well, once again, thank you for proving the globe. And in the future, I would have two suggestions for you. First of all, if you get a flat earther that submits a video to you, maybe before you go in, um, you know, head first with reckless abandon, you might want to check some of the numbers and maybe give them a little bit of guidance for doing a good study. The second thing is, when somebody does ask you some good questions, go ahead and answer them. It doesn't matter if they're a teenage gamer, because you never know who's going to be watching and maybe they'll step forward and ask you those same questions. So y'all have a good night, and Merry Christmas to everybody.